In this video, we'll be spending some time and figuring out what are some of the best available options right now in today's time to deploy your website for free. If you're learning as a developer, you would need a sandbox space. You would need a place where you learn and deploy and learn to code without actually paying a lot. So luckily in today's time, the companies are very, very, very friendly to new developers and they want you to learn and they want you to experiment on their platforms. So they give you a very generous free tire, which we are going to exploit in this video and study how you can become a great developer in the initial days and do all the real world deployment and development without paying a single penny. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. All right, I'm gonna start with Cloudflare Pages, which is the newest tool out there, but it's backed by a solid company, Cloudflare. So I'm assuming that this would be a tool which will be even built more and maintained more and even upgraded in the further times. So this this is an amazing solution if you have a Jamstack application and when you say Jamstack it means that all of your application code and everything is static that means your pages are generated either on the build time or you just generate them beforehand somehow and you don't have any server-side rendering you don't have much of dynamic interactivity because Although Cloudflare does say that it has a dynamic functionality with Cloudflare workers, but this solution right here, one of the major cons of the solution that it's, it's, it's a very limited solution in terms of what you can do on a server side rendering basis. So if you want a solution like Next.js to work with Cloudflare pages right now, it will be a very, very painful process if you want all the features to work. But on the flip side, the pros of this is that it's, it's, it has a very generous free tire. You can see, Pretty much if you're doing it at a solo pace, then you would always be inside the free tire. And even if you're running a very popular website, as long as you don't cross these one build at a time and 500 builds per month, you pretty much have unlimited bandwidth. And Cloudflare is one of the few cloud provider companies out there which are very, very lenient on the bandwidth part. If you're somebody who is expecting a huge amount of traffic or something and you can make your website or blog or something static, that is Jamstack in a, in a Jamstack way, then Cloudflare Pages is an amazing way to get started. So to summarize, the pro is that it's free, has a very nice generous free tire. It supports complete Jamstack on the edge. So your users will get pleasant experience browsing your website because they will be served your web pages directly from Cloudflare CDN. And it is backed by Cloudflare. So you will expect a lot of new updates and features addition to Cloudflare pages. The con of this is that you will not be able to use a lot of benefits and features of server-side rendering if you are using frameworks like Next.js or Nuxt, for example. So that is something the support is still missing for, but let's see what happens in future. All right, so the next option you have, which is completely free as well for beginning, for starting your deployment is Netlify. Now, Netlify is one of those cloud providers which don't exactly give you a backend, but they would allow you to have things like serverless functions, for example. It's like a partial backend integration, if you want to say in that way. But Netlify is also a very, very popular solution out there for hosting not only just Jamstack applications, which are static, but also applications which are dynamic till a certain extent, for example, Next.js or Nuxt, for example, or any other sort of basic server-side rend rendering application, Gatsby, anything you can think of, which is a popular tool and which does not involve a long running server. Chances are that you can deploy the front end for that on Netlify today. They have a solid tech stack they have a solid infrastructure and they offer a lot of their functionalities completely for free of course in a certain given bandwidth and you know those those sort of limitations but if you even if you take a look at free in the full featured list you're gonna see that if you're working on an individual level and if you're working on small projects 100 gb bandwidth per month is i mean it's it's okay also if you're doing like 100 gigs of bandwidth a month it's probably a better idea to shift that resource to either S3 or the Cloudflare's new storage R2, which we'll talk about in a few months when it is available to everyone. But yeah, don't really serve a lot of static videos or heavy static video or images, which you know can be shifted from your main domain. So other than that, I think it's a pretty generous free tire for you to get started and deploy simple websites like your portfolio, maybe a little bit of backend, maybe a little bit of JWT auth based solution. 
So yep, I think it's a good way to get started and this is something you can consider as well. All right, the next solution on the list which I have in the increasing order of my preference personally is Vercel. Now Vercel is an amazing solution for people who want to use it for free because Vercel oversells, I mean it, it over delivers when you are on free plan but it kind of I feel like it charges you a lot if you are on pro plan or I'm not sure about enterprise, but for pro, I can, you know, just say a few things about this. Maybe we can discuss it later, but the pricing angle of pro, I don't personally like. But for free people who are on the hobby plan for basically non-commercial for personal projects or whatever you are doing, they have an extremely generous free tire, which kind of matches with what Netlify also offers because Warsell and Netlify more or less are in the same space. The only difference is that Vercel has a better native integration with Next.js simply because it's the parent company so they obviously build some ways to provide better support for Next.js because of business reasons as well because that's why people would prefer to use it but other than that I believe like the inbuilt image optimization for example or the built execution time is far more superior than Netlify so you can see on Netlify you have 300 minutes per month on Vercel you have 6000 minutes so it's like a 20 times increase even in the free plan so it's good I mean some of the values which they have on the free plan are extremely good it gets a little tricky when you move to the pro part but we are since we are just sticking to the free part I'm just going to that space right now maybe we can discuss it in some other video but in general Vercel is close to like 10 times expensive if you consider the pro part and on the bandwidth and serverless execution pricing right so they give you a certain amount of limits for free like 1000 hours and 1 terabyte of bandwidth on pro but then they charge you $55 per 100 GB of bandwidth which is like way too expensive for anyone to do any sort of meaningful work and $55 of 100 gigabyte hours of serverless execution but yeah this is something different for, for the free plan I believe they have a great resource a great place to get started and yeah you should definitely check them out if you are building anything with next.js anything with Next, anything with these sort of frameworks if you don't like Vercel, you can always go back to netlify as well now the pro of Vercel and netlify both of them is that this partly support a bit of back-end things right and even in back-end you can think about they would support everything which can be executed in a serverless fashion but they would not support anything which needs a a long running server right or even if you are trying to do something which in, involves some sort of expensive operation you're going to see that Vercel is pretty pretty strict on five second time limit right they will just time out your functions if it exceeds five seconds so five seconds i don't think is a lot of time to actually do anything meaningful out of your own serverless functions that means not doing some sort of network request or connecting to a database and processing some data doing a long running job and so on but yeah i mean that you will run in you might run into some limits on the free versal plan so that is like a con in the sense that you have to develop your application in a jam stack in a serverless way and there are some strict limits set right and the pricing is a bit expensive once you try to upgrade so the pro part of Vercel and netlify both is that they give you a fair amount of access to the backend resources that means you are able to run node.js on serverless environment without configuring any sort of aws or anything so that gives you the ability to connect to databases somehow in a secure manner and do a bunch of processing if you can just stay within the five second window at least on Vercel, you would have to see what the netlify window is so netlify it's not like a strict limit per function run but it's rather on a number of hours you can spend so that's cool but yeah they give you a little bit of backend access so that you can do some backend some basic backend work without actually setting up a full-blown application somewhere else in the cloud and of course both of them are free so that's like the biggest pro for both of them the next player on the list is Heroku and Heroku I believe is a great place and one of the first cloud providers I have heard myself as something where you can host a complete server a long-running server for free so that is great 
if you want any any sort of Node.js process or any sort of API which you want to be running for free. So there's a concept of dynos in Heroku where they allow you to run a free dyno per month, which I think they have now set up a few limits, which might be a little bit restricting, but you still get the ability to actually run on a cloud computer for free, which has these, these many specs and you Heroku essentially just gives you SSH access and pretty much anything you would want from a cloud provider to give you, right? You can run your node process, you can run your any sort of script you want for free, 100% on Heroku. So I think a lot of people also use Heroku as a backend. So maybe you can deploy maybe your frontend on Cloudflare pages or Vercel or some other website and use Heroku as your backend platform, right? And this is like a very common architecture. I might even discuss it in some video, but yeah, this is something I believe you should consider as well if you're doing anything backend custom or backend specific. One example which comes to my mind is for example anything related to web sockets but you don't necessarily want to dive into serverless web sockets which is with API gateway and lambdas and this and that because it might be just too much for your simple chat application so just deploying that on Heroku might be a nicer idea. And the final solution I have for you is DigitalOcean. Now DigitalOcean is a proper cloud computing company just like Heroku. I'm not saying like Heroku is not but just like Heroku, DigitalOcean also has a concept of droplets and managed services and this and that. So it's in a nutshell, it's just like Heroku, but a little bit friendlier for a lack of better word. I mean, I, I might be biased because I have used DigitalOcean myself a lot. So that is why uh, I feel like it's relatively easier to get started so you don't get anything for free on digital ocean but if you follow a link cdm.sh slash digital ocean which you can see on your screen and by the way this video is not sponsored trust me i really like digital ocean myself i have used it for a few personal projects nothing serious because anything serious goes on aws but anything which is personal or you know just needs a few days of life that can definitely go on digital ocean and you get a hundred dollar free credit if you take my referral link it's just the way it works right you would not get hundred dollars for free if you sign up directly if you use cdm.sh slash digital ocean you will get a hundred dollar 60 day credit for yourself so make use of that it's it's definitely not as nicer compared to 100% free like Heroku or Vercel, but it still gives you like enough time and enough money to just set up a few servers, see if you like it, because on $100, even if you're running a $5 digital ocean instance, that can last you like 20 months, so which is like just under two years, so that is awesome, but you probably would not be using it for just two years. You would either shift to some other cloud provider or something else, so that's why I say like, it's a great place to experiment your backend related skills and it's relatively simpler to set up as well compared to AWS because AWS also gives you a free tire. I could have mentioned it here, but a couple of reasons. First reason is I wanted to keep it for just five providers. And second of all, AWS is not some cloud provider, which I would recommend as a first time thing for anyone to anyone. You need to have a bit of understanding about in general, how cloud providers work before you actually move on to the big guns. AWS does not have a nice user experience. Trust me, I say that people use AWS because they need to use not because there is no other alternative so in most of the cases you just use AWS because how good and solid their infrastructure is not their UI or UX so yeah so yeah that's pretty much it that was my list of five free websites very very relevant in today's time you can see I did not include GitHub pages or anything because that's not relevant anymore after we have things like Cloudflare pages or Netlify or Vercel. So this is like an updated list. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what your favorite provider is. If I have not listed anyone, let me know in the comments as well. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also so if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.